Welcome back. This is Spencer from True Tine Outdoors. And today we're doing an e-scouting video on moose, specifically high mountain moose, basically a high mountain plateau that has a bunch of marshes scattered throughout this plateau. There's slashes that surround these. The time frame that we're gonna focus on e-scouting for is September 20th to roughly around October 10th. Anywhere in there, peak rut can hit, and that's sort of for moose specifically. The e-scouting software that I'm using is iHunter. The base map that I'm using on iHunter is Mapbox Satellite with a 3D option. I will also be using and incorporating today a uh, wind indicator so that I can show you what the wind is doing at real time in that location. And we will use that to set up our tactics on how we're gonna hunt the certain zones that we get into. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into it. So this is our area. Essentially, the area is a high mountain plateau. As you can see, high mountain plateau with some deep, deep valleys that surround it filled with marshes in and amongst the plateau some newer slashes and some older slashes as well as some cut lines from either older slashes or they're cut in purposely i don't actually know what these are from these cut lines I'd really like to find out if anybody has some insight on why the timber is grown like that or anything like that please leave a comment below and that would be great I think it'd be a good educational thing to learn about uh, why the timber is cut like this or maybe it was replanted like this let's uh Let's get down to the bottom of it. Hopefully we can. And somebody that knows about this is watching this video. There is also one other feature that's in here is that there's a little bit of an old burn at the top that you can see. Feel that dead fall in there. That's from an old burn, which is a nice feature for high mountain moose. So yeah, that's the area. It's pretty basic and it holds moose. Doesn't it kind of look moosey with all those marshes? Oh yeah, I love seeing moose, it's the best. Let's move on to the zones. So I have quite a few zones picked out here and I'm gonna break down each zone and why I kind of picked it. So this zone, this first zone is the end of the road, fairly new slash and it's got a marsh that kind of peaks up at the top here. It's got a little drainage that comes down into the slash, that little travel corridor you could say in and out of that slash for a moose right so let's mark this right here because that's kind of our focal point when we're going to hunt this slash okay let's move over to this next slash so it's a very similar thing in this slash it's essentially self-facing and at the end of the road there's probably going to be a good feed in the slash there so in that slash particularly it's not like it's going to see a lot of human pressure unless they're getting out and they're hiking into it it's a pretty small slash as well which might make it seem a little bit more secure for an animal uh that's something to always consider i always kind of think about those little things but yeah so i like that slash end of the road slash it's kind of my like motto here Okay, and now we've got essentially another end of the road slash. There's a new slash and then there's also an older slash. It gives you kind of different growth ages in vegetation. I really enjoy the fact that it's at the end of the roads. I overlook slashes that are right alongside like a main road. And I think it's because it sees more vehicle traffic. Okay, this one, uh, this one comes down to basically the same aspect as uh, the second zone. 
but it is a little bit older and I like that. And there is a little bit of a depression down in here, which kind of seems like it could be a little bit of a bog. I'm going to mark that right there. And then there's also a little high knoll in there, which you could get up and sit on that little bog down in there. So that might be part of our tactic. We're going to leave it at that. We're going to move on to our next little zone. Okay, so this one in particular, I really like because it's filled with marshes and it's got all these old slash lines, which I don't know what they are, but that's okay. We're going to just kind of focus on the fact that it has marshes intertwined through all of this and you can use these little slash lines to travel to different locations. We'll come back to that. This zone right here is my favorite zone, uh, basically because it's secluded marshes. There's a reason why they call them swamp donkeys, right? You go into these marshes and you can sit for first light and you can call. Every day we're going to be calling, strategically calling in different ways, depending on we're getting responses, depending on if we know that there's a moose in the area, we're looking for sign constantly in these spots. This is a great spot. I love this. Okay, this zone, there's old burn, there's marshes that are surrounded by timber. There's a huge marsh down in here. I love that. Older slashes, right? A little newer slashes, really old slash. I probably wouldn't spend that much time in this really old slash. It would just be really hard to hunt. But all these other spots in here, I would definitely spend quite a bit of time in. And there's a lot in here that I can mark up even more. But the specific idea of this is that we're focusing on the ends of the roads and we're focusing on secluded marshes. I would say finding the spots that are less pressured is kind of the whole basis of e-scouting, right? This goes hand in hand with a lot of different animals. So now that we've gone over the zones, let's talk about the hunt itself. What we're going to do is we're going to look at potential spots to camp coming into the spot. Now, I have heard lots of stories of moose coming right into camp and boom, it's done. <laughs> lots of stories. But what we're going to focus on here is picking a camping spot. So keeping that in our mind, let's pick a spot where we can camp and maybe just like walk down into a little marsh for a quick jaunt. Let's say you come back for lunch and you're like, oh, let's just go check this little marsh out or something like that. And it might be like 200 yards away or something you know, might be worth it. So I would say that if I am to camp in here, hmm, I like when it's open, when you can see around you. So I'm going to pick right here. It's kind of a jetted out landing. So that'll be my camp. Let's take our first zone here. And the first thing we're going to do before we talk about going into the zone is we are going to put on the wind indicator. So that's the direction of the wind right now. So we're going to take that like that's what's happening when we're there. We might as well. So in this circumstance with the way the wind is blowing right now, I'm probably going to walk in and get to this point and i'm probably just gonna sit i'm just gonna sit for the first like hour the reason being is because it's kind of a higher point and it's kind of like a landing so you'll be able to see in here 
a little bit. And then you'll also be able to see down in here a little bit. And so I just kind of want to get most advantage I possibly can on the slash. After I get to that point and I've sat there for a little bit of time and it's past like the first hour of light, I'll probably keep moving throughout the slash, keep cruising on. Knowing which way the wind is going, I'll probably cross over and get onto this side. So I've kept moving, haven't seen anything yet. One thing I might do as well is I'll probably walk down and into this marsh and kind of peek into it and see if there's a moose in the area because it's very possible that a moose could be just hanging out and that could be its little solitude little marsh right there if you add in calling and it is the rut there's a good chance that you might get a response within that first hour of you sitting long drawn out call to start out with if you do end up seeing a bull or hearing an answer pretty close, then you're going to do a shorter drawn out cow call. If you actually know one's on its way in, you might need to entice it with a grunt or a raking something, something to entice it to get it to come in and maybe challenge you. Okay, I'm gonna go down to this one. And essentially this slash here is the exact same thing as the other slash. I'm gonna walk in and I'll probably park myself right over here by the timber and just sit there for the evening or the morning. And I find that you kind of go into these spots and you you go, okay, well, is this actually a good enough spot? You, I decide on the, on the spot when I'm there, if it's worth my time sitting there and staying there. So for this, I'm just going to sit and have a good vantage and a good view of this whole slash. You can see up, you'll be able to see over into here, which is pretty good against that timber. I like that. You get the gist of it with these end of the road slashes. It's just kind of walking into them and taking your time and then sitting for like the first hour of the morning sort of thing after shooting light. So let's move on to this zone. So for this zone, I'll show you where I park. That seems like a good pull off. So if I'm parking right there, I'm walking the road, I'm coming down, I'm coming down, walking into this slash, probably just going to keep walking to this newer slash, get to the end. And then if the wind is still pushing the same way, I will probably walk up the edge of this timber, always be looking into the newer slash, walk up to the top tip of that timber right there. Finding little spots to keep that vantage on that zone. This zone is just kind of thrown into the mix because it's got two different age classes of growth in the slash. So I would just kind of walk through, see if you see sign, maybe go into the old slash, go into these, little openings where animals could find seclusion in them. And then even down here, there's a marsh. There's another marsh here. And then down through these marshes. Kind of walk through this area and always bear in mind the wind. I think that's probably the best way to describe this zone. And the next one is going to be pretty much the same thing. Let's say we go in in the morning and we haven't seen anything in he in this zone right here. And we will go up 
and come in to here. And the wind is still doing the same thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to come along this timber. And we're going to get onto the high point that's in the slash. Let's say it's the evening now and you're sitting for the evening. Okay. So the wind is still pushing this way. So what we'll do is we'll sit here. Yeah, we'll be able to see sort of that little north face with a couple of trees in it. And then we'll be able to see down into this little bog sort of thing that has got a couple of trees in it. So I like that. I would just leave it at that and do that for the evening. Or if it comes down to it and you end up doing it for the morning, perfect. I'm breaking down a hunt where you're in here for like a week and there's not a lot of human traffic in here because you're here midweek, which is awesome, right? Like you can just pound this spot and you will eventually find moose. You will. You just need to constantly keep moving and searching and once you get to areas where you're like, yeah, there's fresh sign here, like they're here right now. Well, then that's when you start calling. Okay, so here's the next zone. Without me going too crazy into depth with it, I'm going to just give you one little example of what I'm going to do for this. So I really like this right here. The fact that there's a marsh in the middle of this slash that has timber surrounding the marsh. They'll probably keep the wind in mind. So if I'm walking in on the road and the wind is still the same, okay, I'm going to cut through here and get into the slash here. And then I'm going to walk, walk, walk. Now let's look where we're at here. Okay, you're not going to be able to see too much, but you're going to be constantly looking, constantly looking. This is first thing in the morning. Okay, and I'm just gonna hug this side. It's essentially the same tactics for every single slash. You could sit for the morning or you can move through. I think a lot of people would typically say, well, it's probably better odds if you're gonna sit, uh, you, you have less disturbance. Me in particular, I like to cover ground. I'm looking for sign throughout this whole route. So that's my specific take on moving a lot. So there's something else to consider while coming into this slash is that there is a high point in this slash that you could sit at and you could look directly into this marsh right here. Probably you might be able to see directly into it and it's, a, it's at a really good distance. It give, keeps you far enough away where you're, you're not too close, you're not too tight. Sort of seeing that, if I were to pick one of the ways that I would hunt this, I'm going to, instead of moving through the edge, I'm gonna just come along here. And then I'm gonna push into there. And I'm gonna pop out onto that little knoll and I'm just going to sit there for the morning, sit there for two hours, call, long drawn out call, wait. If there's nothing, sorry, you could do a little bit of a shorter call after that because you don't know something could be on its way in. Those are two different ways to basically hunt that slash. It's basic stuff. It really is. It's playing the wind, sitting on spots that you think are probable, calling first light all these things just like constantly trying these tactics trying these things and constantly searching for sign i find that when i move more i also stay more engaged with like the hunt itself it keeps my mind on the hunt if i'm just sitting the whole time it's kind of bland like i like looking and finding sign oh there's a rub you know like all these things, they, they matter and they're really cool little indicators that these animals are here. So try and enjoy yourself while you're out there and hunt the way you want to hunt, right? I'm going to point out this one little spot in here. 
Now, if we're hiking from over here, we're going to hike along here. We're going to use one of these trails. Wind is still going that way. Okay, we're coming in. And then we're going to get above this marsh, and we're going to tuck in to the corner of it there. I like it. Places like this have a lot of moose, so there's a good chance that you could bump a moose on the way in, anything, right? Or maybe even a grizzly. Don't do that, though that would suck look at this hey it's just a nice little pond at the bottom of this marsh right here just kind of works its way through here which is nice yeah there's a nice little uh drainage that goes right into that pond it's a really nice spot there's so many different ways you can look at it and it's going to change in the field Another thing to add is finding this type of spot. This type of spot has moose. You just need to find this spot and go and hunt it for that duration. If you can get in and hunt it for the rut, that's the biggest thing. With that being said, I'm gonna move on and I'm gonna go into one other little spot here. So I'm pushing from that marker and I'm going in and wind is still pushing the same way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just come and poke myself into that first marsh right there. It's first thing in the morning and we just poked ourselves into that marsh. We're going to plunk on the edge of it. Okay. Out of sight of any moose that could potentially be in that marsh. We're moving up really slowly to it. We're going to sit and we're gonna make our call. We're gonna make a good cow call, good long drawn out cow call. And then we're gonna make another cow call if nothing has come in or if you can't hear anything. If you can hear something coming in, you know what to do. We're gonna shorten that call up. And then once it comes in really tight, then we're gonna draw it in and we're gonna entice it with a bull grunt and a rake. That's our tactic for this marsh. So now I'm gonna move into this zone here. It's got everything. It's got new slash, it's got old slash, it's got marshes that are secluded in ways. This big marsh, I think that that would be a really good focal point. That right there, that marsh is, a, is definitely a spot to sit and call. If the wind's the same, then we're coming into this side and we're going to sit on the edge and we're going to call into that marsh. Okay, I'm just going to kind of throw in some things here. It's going to be quick. I'm not going to focus on this. It doesn't really give me good vantage. I kind of like this right in here. Let's say we're moving on from this. We're just kind of pushing through these marshes just to check for sign. And then we come out to the edge of this over here and we park bench. Now the reason why I do that is because it kind of has like a, a dip there and you can see all of this and even up the draw, but you do have to push out, you do have to push out a little bit more like over to here sort of thing because it's on one side of the jaw, and then you'll be able to see kind of that whole face right there. Pushing yourself through, looking for different spots. These bulls are gonna be cruising right now. They're gonna be on the move. So I'm not gonna go into anything more into this zone because there's, there's so many different ways that you can look at it. The number one thing I always say is that boots on the ground beats it all, and it's true for this because you don't really know how the wind is going to be playing and you're coming into these marshes and you want to make calls and you want to be in there for first light. Um, all these things matter. We play the wind, we work our way through these spots or we sit in these spots that give us vantages and then we're making calls. I like first light for this specifically because BC has been hot even at the end of September, BC's been hot. So that first light is so crucial. Let's review what we went over. The area, 
the area is a high mountain plateau that has a bunch of marshes and that has old slashes and new slashes all intertwined with these marshes that hold a lot of moose. Moose love this type of habitat right here. Now we're going to talk about the zones. So the zones is this, this, this one, this one, this one, this little guy, this one right here, which is end of the road slashes. This one is kind of just a, another toss in because it has two different growth stages in slashes. Something to kind of consider. This is a nice little slash that has a little bit of a dip in it that has a bog right there. Then we got this one, which has all these little channels cut through this timber or they've just re regrown that way. I'm not really sure with a bunch of marshes that intertwine throughout all of this area or this little zone right here is just secluded marshes kind of out of the pressure. The last one has new slashes, old slashes, older burn marshes intertwined throughout. There's so many things that you could break down in this spot and hunt and use different tactics to, to try and find yourself a moose. So then we went over the hunt and the hunt is moving into these old slashes maybe sitting on the edge of these old slashes calling at first light if you have a bull coming in and you can hear him maybe enticing the bull with grunts or rakes focusing on all these marshes playing the wind in every single zone that we're hunting all these tactics can be used throughout this whole spot there's so many different ways to hunt this specific spot and hunt for moose. I think that the best thing to take in mind is that we need to be there to make these decisions. Because once we start spending time in there, we can actually start finding where the moose are spending their time. So that's a wrap. Once again, I use the iHunter software and I use the Mapbox satellite with a 3D image and I turned on the wind indicator in this to show me which way the wind is blowing in this particular area. And then I use that to make my judgments on the specific zones that I was hunting. I'm going to be hoping to draw an LEH in a spot like this this year for moose. And I wish you the best of luck trying to draw an LEH in a spot like this as well. If you are trying to, good luck out there in the field and remember that boots on the ground beats it all, it always will.